Hello, I'm James Hartman, Interim Pastoral Leader of Metropolitan Community Church here in Baton Rouge. We want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. To see the entire service, including music, prayers, scripture readings, and our children's moment, please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr. Plus, you're always welcome to join us live on Sunday mornings. We stream at 11 a.m. Central Time. Stay tuned after the message for more information on how you can stay in touch with us. Good morning, MCC. I want to welcome everybody to our service today. It's a, it's a nice day to be inside. And here we are, a, a family together. And it's always wonderful to come together in the house of the Lord. And we want to welcome anyone that's here for the first time. Our visitors, we ask you to fill out a yellow card. Rhonda has those. And if you're scared to raise your hand, you can get it when the offering plate goes by. Anyway, turn them in at the end of the service at our front desk. We have a little gift for you. And if you're watching us live, we want to welcome you too. And invite you to come back every Sunday at 11. Lord, we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for this group of people, Lord. And we're thankful for those who are watching us from far off. Lord, we're thankful for everything that we have and everything that we can be. And Lord, today we just come into your presence with joy and with singing and with worship. Yes, sir. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will take over this spirit, this service. And Lord, that as we hear your word, we will be touched to our hearts, and we will take your word with us when we leave here. We thank you for everything, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. This morning's um, second Sunday of Advent reading, too many tell us not to discuss politics or religion at Christmas. Let's be nice, they say. The appearance and proclamation of truth, justice, and love may disturb the norm and make the comfortable uncomfortable. The prophetic word is often disturbing. Even the shepherds quaked at the sight and sound of glory streaming. We have constant news streams today and most of it is not good news. Much of it is opinion and positioning rather than news. What would our world be like if we joined in glory stream and the surprising song of the angels? What news are you sharing? How are you speaking love justice, and hope into today's issues and struggles. Today, we light the second Advent candle. The first reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 and 2. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thank you, God. Oh, giving God all the praise and all the glory this morning. Amen. Amen. Some of you noticed I am a little crippled, but that's okay. I've been wearing heels for. Since the last Sunday, I got home, took my shoes off, and my heart fell to my right foot. So I'm limping, and like Satan trying to tell me, you're not going anywhere this morning. I had to move my car, and had, first thing I did was put my heel down and stuck in the mud. I said, okay, that means you gained five pounds. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> this morning's sermon is regarding dry bones. You know, my experience in Los Angeles this week was just that. I mean, there were rooms filled with people who were in pain. And God gave me the scripture. Go to Ezekiel. I'm like, oh, here we go again. Because, you know, I grew up hearing people preach about can these dry bones live? It's easy for me to go back to yesterday, but the problem is, is that somebody in here cannot relate to the days of old because we're living in this time. So I won't go through the whole litany of how the bones connect 
Everybody knows that if you have finger bones, your finger bones are going to connect to the hand bone. And that hand bone is going to connect to the arm bone. And the next bone will go on up and connect to the shoulder bone. But the problem is today that we are so disconnected on so many levels. Amen. And that we find ourselves living like dry bones. You don't know how you're going to pay this month's rent. See, that's your dry bone. Are you sitting by the bedside of a loved one knowing they're going to transition? <coughs> you find yourself in a place of a dry bone. And you ask yourself, you see, you want to know, well, since I can't do anything, what's my next move? You find yourself in tears and you're feeling hopeless and helpless. But you see, I'm here to bring you some good news today. If you just look up to the hill from which cometh your help, you can find yourself living and finding life in the midst of those dry bones. So when you ask yourself, can these dry bones live. I say to you, yes, you can. Amen. Uh, you can live and rise up and be successful. You can make a difference in the midst of dry bones in the back. You see, I found myself a part of those dry bones this week. You see, I knew that there were things that I needed to come to grips with. I found myself in a moment of a period of dry bones. But I realized that I couldn't stay in that place because I met somebody whose situation was a lot more difficult than mine. So I rose up from the pits of dry bones. You see, in here this morning, somebody is in the midst of being in a place of dry bones. You're wondering, What's your next move? Well, I am here to tell you today that your next move should always be to bow down. If you can't bow down, sit down and look up. Amen. Raise your hand if, if you can't do no more than that. And say, for God I live and for God I die. Lord, raise me up. Amen. See, if you give what you've got, that, you, that burden that you're bearing that seems a little too heavy for you to carry, that dry bone is not yours to carry. Amen. Give it to the Lord. Amen. See, there are too many dry bones these days in the back. And the problem is, is that we see people in the pits of hell and we don't know how to reach down and pick them up. We'll walk by and look at them and say, now you know what, if they were living this way, that way, and the other way, then they wouldn't be there. But who are we to judge? Amen. Who are we? What gives us the right to condemn another man when the scripture tells us all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? Everybody in here has had their time in the period of dry bones in the back. You cry at night. Sometimes you go to bed crying and wake up the same way. The problem with that is that we pray about things and then we go back and pick it up. You see, it, we, enough of us don't have what I call some mailman faith. If you want to really get out of the pits of dry valleys uh, where all them dead bones are, you got to connect to people who are going somewhere. You got to connect to praying people. You got to learn how to cut off them folks that ain't doing nothing but pulling you down. Right. You see, when you got some mailman faith, and mailman faith is nothing more than us going to work for two weeks, get that paycheck, put that check, whatever's left of it, in an envelope, give it to a man that we don't know to take it to some place that we don't know where it's going, to deal with people that we never met, and we wait 30 days to have our accounts balanced. But when you
you go to God, you pray at night, go back the next morning and upset because your prayers are answered. Where is your mailman faith? If you can trust somebody that you don't know, why you can't trust the God that gave you all that you are? Somebody who created you to be everything. Amen. Who has always supplied, supplied your every need. See, the problem is, too many of us looking at what we want and don't understand God has already given us what we need. And if we were just a little bit more grateful, Amen. wouldn't be so many dry bones in the back. Amen. Right. Dry bones in the back. Can these dry bones live? See, I come this morning to tell you that each of us in this room is nothing more than a dry bone. All of us are dry bones. But this morning there's hope because we can water these dry bones with some faith. Amen. We can feed these dry bones with some hope. Amen. And we can just inject these bones with some forgiveness. Amen. And we can embrace every man with some love. Amen. And then we can get rid of judgment. Yes. Oh, glory, hallelujah this morning. See, I come to tell you that you don't have to remain a dry bone in the valley. In the name of Jesus this morning, Amen. bless you. Amen. You know, there's a lot of ways that we can think of Connect up those dry bones, put flesh on those dry bones, and actually go out and do the work of the Lord in our community and in our world. As always, we invite you to record on our, what we call our, uh, I don't know, time cards, whatever. Uh, <laughs> kind of like our report, things that we've done <coughs> this week or in the past few weeks, whenever the last time you might have turned one of these things in. To do things here in the church, to do things for people in the church, to do things for people or organizations in the community. And if you're out there online or cyberspace, then we invite you to send us an email and let us know what you've done and the time that you've spent doing things, whether it's in this community or in your home community, wherever. We also, of course, give of our finances through this congregation. We keep this place open. We keep this place available not only for our worship, and for our praise of God, but for other community groups to use and have available, the Freedom Center. We do things in our community, obviously, like collecting the things that we are now for our Heritage House uh, Christmas baskets and other things throughout the year. A little piece of what we give goes to our denomination. That helps support things and projects around the world. Who would have thought that we'd have several congregations in Cuba, that Brazil would be our fastest growing area, that we have congregations in Africa and in Asia, as well as, as uh, Europe and Australia and so forth. So let us pray together. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come to you, to bring those dry bones to you so that you may help us and we may help you as well to put the flesh on those bones, to connect those bones together, to make them into living activities, living support for the people of our community and our world. We ask that you would bless this offering and help us to carry it just as far as we possibly can to do your will in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Hello, MCC banners. Now is the time in our service where we think of that night that Jesus was to be betrayed. We think of the time in our lives when we felt that we were that dry bone and the only thing that could help us was Jesus. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was having a meal with his friends his loved ones. 
I like the illustration that James used. He said it was it was twelve men. It wasn't a room of, of white men. It was it was a diverse group of people like we are today. Amen. We're all included. We're all inclusive. Yes. We're we are our brothers and sisters keepers. Amen. We are one father's children. Amen. Jesus took the bread. He broke it and he gave thanks. Thank you, Lord, for giving your body that we might have life, <clears throat> health, and understanding. And in the same manner, he took the cup. He blessed it. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us for the things that we did that we shouldn't have and the things that we <laughs> didn't do that we should have. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to continue to be in your kingdom and give us the courage and strength to do your will for your purpose, for your way in our lives, in Jesus' name. He said, whenever you drink of this cup or eat of this bread, remember me and the things that I've done for you today. Sisters and brothers, here at Metropolitan Community Churches, we serve an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or any other church to come to the table of God. All are welcome here. When you come forward, we'll take the bread, dip it in a napkin at the grape juice, and place it on your tongue. Or if you so choose, your cup in your hands, and we'll place it there to be able to serve yourself. As well as, there will be a prayer partner available on either side at the front if you have a special need to share. All we ask is you come as the ushers direct you. So the acolytes of service, please come forward. Lord, we just thank you so much for this service. We thank you, Lord, for your word going forth as it did. And we just believe that the dry bones come to life. Yes, yes, Lord. yes. yes because we know that you're able to do all things above and beyond anything we ask and pray. And Lord, we just praise your wonderful name. And as we go forth, Lord, and as we go to eat, we pray for the we thank you for the food and we pray for the food to be the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your service. And Lord, we pray for a good meeting that we're about to have after this service. Yes, Lord. We thank you for everything and we give this week to you. And we believe, Lord, that you will meet our needs this week and go with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Remember, Again, thank you for watching our worship message on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of our other posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety at facebook.com slash mccbr. And you can watch us live every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Central streaming on Facebook. Please also visit our webpage at mccbr.org where you can see our calendar of events and learn more about our church and our denomination. Please also like our Facebook page so you'll be notified of upcoming events and other posts. Thanks again and have a very blessed day. No one can deny what the Spirit is doing And nothing can replace Or destroy the work in you Oh, oh, oh. So when it seems like no one cares And even God is forsaken you Just remember that those He called I'll justify, I'll glorify, not even life or death, not even wrong.